Hello friends, welcome back to the series of photo emission spectra and in this video we will discuss about spin orbital coupling of XPS data. When we try to analyze the XPS data, we can see that some of the peaks show sharp single peak like in case of sodium 1s as shown here and in some cases the peak is split into two parts for example as in case of chlorine 2p. This peak splitting is observed due to spin orbital coupling. As the name suggests, it is the coupling or interaction between spin and orbital motion of electron. So let's first understand what is spin of electron. Spin, spin is rotation of electron around its own axis and this rotation produces a magnetic field as shown here with the blue line. Now. As electron is also revolving around the nucleus, this angular motion also produces a magnetic field. We can try to see this orbital motion in an alternate point of view, where you can say that the nucleus is moving around the electron. It's the same thing but a different perspective. So this motion of charged particle or nucleus creates another magnetic field. This magnetic field is shown with red line. Now there will be interaction between these two magnetic fields. Either they will be in the same direction called with the field orientation or in the opposite direction called against the field. That means now the energy of electron is split in two parts. One with the field lower binding energy and one against the field higher binding energy and thus the peak of such electrons in XPS get splitted in doublet. So let's try to understand how the coupling of spin and orbital motion takes place. So let's try to understand how the coupling of spin and orbital motion takes place. So let's start from the spin. Spin is rotation of electron around its own axis. And spin quantum number has both a magnitude which is 1 by 2 and a direction which can be plus or minus. So the spin quantum number of an electron can have two possible values that, that is plus half or minus half. On the other hand due to orbital motion of electron orbital quantum number arises which is also known as azimuthal quantum number and its value depends on total number of angular nodes in the orbital or in simple words the value depends on shape of the orbital. For example as s orbital is spherical and they don't have any nodes the value of azimuthal quantum number i is 0. For p orbitals all px, py and pz orbitals are similar and have one node therefore azimuthal quantum number is 1. Similarly, for d orbitals having two nodes, one for dxy, dyz and dxz orbitals and one for dz square and dx square, y square orbitals. Thus, azimuthal quantum number is 2. And finally, for f orbitals, it is 3 for three nodes in orbitals. Now, the coupling or combination of spin quantum number and orbital quantum number takes place. Spin orbital coupling constant j is given by j is equals to magnitude of L plus s where L is azimuthal quantum number or orbital quantum number and s is spin quantum number. For s orbitals L is equals to 0 as we discussed earlier and s is always plus half or minus half. So, so coupling constant j becomes 0 plus half is equal to plus half or 0 minus half is equal to minus half but we are taking only magnitude so j is always 1 by 2. Similarly for p orbitals l is equal to 1 and s is equal to plus half or minus half so j becomes 1 plus half is equal to 3 by 2 and 1 minus half is equal to 1 by 2. Similarly for d orbitals l is equal to 2 and s is always plus half and minus half. So j becomes 
2 plus half is equals to 5 by 2 and 2 minus 1 by 2 becomes 3 by 2. And lastly for f orbitals l is equals to 3 and s is equals to plus half or minus half. So j becomes 3 plus 1 by 2 is equals to 7 by 2 or 3 minus 1 by 2 is equals to 5 by 2. So you can see that for higher orbitals like p, d and f the, there are two values of j and therefore p splits into two parts while for s orbital only one value of j is available and yeah. therefore they don't show any peak splitting they are always singlet now as we understand that each peak split into two parts but but the intensity of these two splitted peaks are not always same they are in a particular ratio and this intensity ratio depends on the number of electrons in each state state or which is also known as degeneracy so the number of electrons in each split orbitals is given by function of degeneracy and the formula for degeneracy is 2j plus 1 where j is the coupling constant which we have already calculated in the previous slide. So now let's calculate degeneracy for each orbital. For s orbitals as the value of j is 1 by 2 if we put the value of j is equals to 1 by 2 degeneracy comes around 2. So that means in s orbital both the electrons have same degeneracy or same energy function while in case of p orbital when we put the value of j is equals to 3 by 2 degeneracy comes 4 and when we put the value of j 1 by 2 then degeneracy comes 2 that means total 6 electrons of p orbital are splitted into two parts 4 electrons with same energy and 2 electrons with different energy. So the peak intensity ratio will be 4 raised to 2 or we can say 2 raised to 1. Similarly in case of d orbitals when, when we put the value of j 5 by 2 it comes 6 and when we put the value of j 3 by 2 then degeneracy comes 4. That, that means out of 10 electrons of d orbital 6 are having different energy and 4 are having different energy that means the intensity ratio of the splitted peaks will be 6 by 4 or we can say 3 by 2. Similarly in case of f orbitals when we put the value of j 7 by 2 degeneracy comes 8 and when we put j is equals to 5 by 2 degeneracy comes 6 that means out of the 14 f orbital electrons 8 are having different energy and 6 are having different energy therefore the peak ratio becomes 4 by 3. So let's take some of the example first is sodium 1s so electrons are in 1s orbitals so this peak will not split and it will show only single peak so that is here second is chlorine 2p which is split into 2p 1 by 2 and 2p 3 by 2 these are the spin states so and now from the image you can see that the peak ratio is 1 by 2 as we have already calculated for p orbitals third example is silver 3d here we are talking about 3d electrons and they have split into two parts 3d 3 by 2 spin state and 3d 5 by 2 spin states and from the image you can see the peak ratio is 2 by 3 similarly for gold 4f orbitals the splitting is from 4f 5 by 2 spin state and 4f 7 by 2 spin states and the peak area ratio is 3 by 4. I hope this video has helped you to understand spin orbital coupling and how it is detected or shown on the XPS data. So that was all and we will meet in the next video on the photo emission spectroscopy series. Till then bye bye.